presentation on MBA Spotlight 2020, uh, our first virtual MBA fair for the top 20 MBA programs over here at GMAT Club. We have Carrie from Stanford. Carrie, it's all you. I wanted to quickly introduce Carrie, Jack, Tamer, and Eddie from the Stanford Graduate School of Business. Go for it, Carrie. Great, thank you very much, Shovik. So good morning, afternoon, and evening. My name is Carrie Oliver. I'm both an admissions officer at Stanford Graduate School of Business and an alumna of the program. I uh, appreciate you taking the time today and thank you GMAT Club for presenting us with this opportunity. As Shovik mentioned, I've, we've got three freshly minted um, uh, alumni from the class of 20, uh, 2020. And also joining online is uh, in the chat is my colleague, Lisa and she'll be answering as many questions as she can there. So I thought we would just do very, very high level introductions of each one of us, and then I'll go into the presentation. You'll see all of us talking during this and we'll all be available for Q&A. So I'll kick it off by saying my, my name, hometown, pre-GSB career, and post-GSB plans. So again, my name is Carrie. I'm actually originally from the San Francisco Bay Area. Before I came to the business school, I spent eight years in public policy in Washington, DC working for the government. And after I um, got my MBA from Stanford, I went into consumer, um, consumer goods uh, in, in um, marketing and innovation. Let's see, how about Jack? Hi, my name's Jack Armstrong from the UK. Um, my hometown is originally a small town in the north of England, and I spent the last seven years before business school in London. Um, before business school, I was a turnaround and restructuring consultant taking a slightly untraditional path uh, as an apprentice. So business school was my first time in the classroom since high school. And then my plan immediately post GSB is private equity operations. So I'm working as chief of staff of a portfolio company in the Bay Area. Great, Tamer. Hi everyone, my name is Tamer. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, but have lived all over from New Hampshire to California to Paris um, in the last few years. Before school, I worked at YouTube in the Bay Area. So I've been in San Francisco Bay Area for about five years now. Um, and I was working on content strategy, strategy there. After school, I'll be working at Netflix on their content strategy and finance team, choosing uh, which shows will go on Netflix and how much we should pay for them. Um, so I'm super excited about that. And I think I'm also interested in venture capital and content production, two things that I've gotten to really explore at Stanford as well. Great. And Eddie. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eddie Boiser. I'm originally from the East Coast. I'm from Hasbro Heights, New Jersey. Uh, before the GSB, I spent four years working at uh, Bain & Company in the New York and Paris offices. Um, Right after the GSB, I'll be returning to Bain um, in 2021. But in the meantime, I've just recently joined a uh, fitness tech startup um, in the Bay Area. Fantastic. And uh, feel free in the chat to let us know your first name and where you're from, um, where you're Zooming in or streaming in from today or YouTubing in from today. All right, so I do want to um, take just a, a moment to acknowledge um, the deep concerns and indeed um, despair that many of us have uh, been feeling in the wake of George Floyd's violent killing and the reminder of systemic racism that we are facing in the United States and this all coming on top of a global pandemic. Um, now more than ever, we need leaders who can't just solve everyday world challenges, but who can actually help us break down and make meaningful changes in our institutions um, and to also lead amidst, you know, really unprecedented circumstances caused by COVID-19. Um, COVID-19 probably means things are changing and evolving for you, and that's true for us also. Uh, if you are planning to apply to our MBA or MSX program during this application year, I recommend that you check our web website regularly, um, in particular our FAQ page, and hopefully Lisa has that handy so she can actually um, give a link in the chat um, we will keep that up to date. And while our physical office is currently closed, we are in full operation from our homes and um, our team of counselors is available uh, by phone and by email to answer your questions. You may want to also visit our events page. We have a lot of other upcoming virtual sessions with students, alumni and admissions officers uh, talking more about uh, the application or what it's like to be a student or an alum. 
So let's begin. So if you are thinking about graduate school and an MBA in particular, you probably have some pretty basic questions on your mind, such as what do I really want to do 5, 10, 15, 20, 40 years from now? How will a management degree from Stanford help me do it? And lastly, can I get in? I would invite you as you think about your application to start at an even higher level than that and think about well, what do I really want to be when I grow up? Maybe when you were a kid, you can take your back to yourself back to a time where you had no fear of failure, no peer or parental or uh, societal pressure to do the, the, the right thing. If you followed your heart, you know, what would you really want to do? And the answer to this question is going to be different for every one of you um, and every one of us on the screen. But what inspires me and what inspires us in admissions about our applicants and our students is they seek a life of meaning and a career of impact. If you come to Stanford, we're going to encourage you to dream really big. Our, our tagline is change lives, change organizations, and change the world. And it's fairly lofty, but we think that we will equip you uh, to, to, to do, start doing those things after your 22 months here on campus um, and, as a student. Uh, and the change lives really starts with you and changing your own life. So I like to think of the GSB as a catalyst. It's a place that's been purposely designed to take you on a journey, and a journey to help you become a stronger and a more effective leader and lead you through change in four distinct ways. So first, we're gonna help you shape how you innovate, dream, and create. Second, um, help you learn how to engage, influence, and lead others more effectively. Third is to change your sense of place in the global community. And finally, uh, we'll broaden your community and probably in ways that are completely unexpected. So the first way that the GSB can help you change, you think, can you really actually teach creativity? And we think the answer is resoundingly yes. Um, Stanford's location and its proximity to Silicon Valley is a perfect environment for design thinking, for thinking about new ways to solve problems. And here I want to ask if Eddie has a couple of comments about his experience with how Stanford helped him along this journey. Yeah, thanks, Carrie. Um, yeah, for me, I think one of the things that makes Stanford such a special place is kind of its focus on interdisciplinary learning. So. One of the things that I've loved most about the MBA program is that I have been able to take classes in all different types of graduate schools and other types of schools at Stanford, not just in the business school. One example of that is I came in here and I kind of came from a business school background, so I wanted to learn a lot more about computer science. And I took as many computer science classes as I could during my first couple quarters. Uh, realized that computer science wasn't for me, uh, <laughs> but it was a great experience nonetheless, and I definitely learned a lot. Um, so that, to me, is what makes you know the Stanford MBA so special. So just to add to that, um, like why is, does interdisciplinary matter? And what we believe, and it's really built into the Stanford ethos, is that you get to, you know, you're gonna come at a problem based on your own experiences, your own life experiences, your own work experiences, and, and, but you'll have people on your team who may be coming from a completely different uh, perspective than you. And that is a huge part of the secret sauce to innovation, and innovation is something that Stanford does extremely well. So the second way that we like to encourage you to change and evolve is personal leadership development. It's a really important part of our general management curriculum. And in your very first days on campus, we're gonna ask you to, to ask yourself and seek the answer to this really simple question. Why would someone follow me? So maybe ask that of yourself right now out loud. Why would someone follow me? Jack, would you mind chiming in about some of the ways our leadership program help you become a more effective leader? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, starting with the small questions this morning, Carrie, why would somebody follow you as a leader? Um, I think uh, what's nice about the GSB experience is we don't just lay out a set of leadership styles and say, pick the one that you think is right. And we don't tell you the one that's right. I think What's nice is it's a period of time where you can step out of your comfort zone and um, dig in, understand yourself, think about your personality style, um, and in a safe environment, test and try different styles and get really candid feedback from your exceptional classmates. Um, 
So for me, that's one of the best parts of the uh, the experience combined with some of the courses that are really crafted to help us. So there's a gazillion leadership courses you can take at Stanford, but there's just a few up on screen here, particularly Lead Labs, which in the first quarter, I know I really kind of got a bit of a shock as to how much work I had to do in terms of honing those soft skills and, and working in small groups. But by the end of the quarter, when you end up in Executive Challenge, it's a really great way to try everything you've learned against alumni from around the world. Um, and then obviously there's the famous um, touchy-feely or interpersonal dynamics course that a lot of people know about when applying to the GSP, which really helps you understand the impact of um, that you have on people and in both the professional and the personal world, um, it's been extremely helpful. So there's just a few ways in which um, I saw leadership development work for me at, at the GSP. Thank you, Jack. Um, the third thing that we um, really encourage you to do is broaden your horizons um, and really try to develop a new sense of your place in the world. So you're going to be challenged in the classroom strictly by the point that you're going to have an incredibly diverse set of classmates. So diversity is not just your geographic location, it's your life experiences, et cetera. Um, our, our, um, our lecturers and professors and also our staff are also incredibly diverse. So you're going to be just challenged by that to, to sort of broaden your perspectives. We also have a global experience requirement that um, and enables you to go and spend uh, time in a, in a place in the world that you've never been uh, before or spent any time and really understand from the perspective of the people who are, who are there and then bring that back to the classroom, et cetera, and share that with your classmates. Um, and then the last, but certainly not the least, uh, way that we will change you is to broaden your community overall. So one thing that I found really unique about the Stanford, um, my Stanford GSB classmates is that they were at Stanford not just to help themselves, but also the people around them, their classmates and others. And so the GSB is, is widely known for its vibrant, intimate and collaborative culture. Um, I'm going to ask Tamar to talk a little bit about some of the things she, she felt that made that, that environment so special. Thanks, Terry. Um, I absolutely love the GSB, especially because of its collaborative culture. And it's one of the reasons I chose the GSB and was really happy to see that that was true. Um, some, of the, some of the few things that uh, I'll talk about here are grade non-disclosure, um, our talk community and housing. So when you come to Stanford, we all agree that we won't share our grades with employers. And so what that means is that you can take the classes that you really want to take um, without worrying if you're going to have any negative ramifications if you don't get a great grade. It also means that people are much more willing to help each other with classes because it's not like you're competing with someone for one specific spot. And so that's something I've really appreciated coming from a content background. I majored in humanities in undergrad and really being able to lean on my classmates to help me um, with accounting and finance has been really wonderful and I've learned quite a lot. Um, in terms of housing, all MBAs uh, ones mostly live on campus. It's like 90% of the MBA ones live on campus, which means that we bump into each other at random moments, which is really exciting. Um, and we get to know each other really well the first year because of that. And so that, in, that creates an incredible sense of community. And then the last thing I'll talk about is something called Talk, which you might have heard about um, as, as you were researching Stanford. It's a weekly forum where two people in each class share a 25 minute story about themselves. And it's not just a list of accomplishments that that person has, but really what makes them who they are, how they grew up and what they care about. And I'm a talk coach, which means that I help uh, people in my class actually put their stories together and tell them in front of 200 people in our class. And that's really rewarding because you can see someone beyond that person that you see in class who's making a great comment, but for who they really are. And about 100 people in their class get the opportunity to do that. And so that's something that I think is a seminal weekly experience for everyone at the GSB. And I'd love being able to go to each of those talks um, during my time here. Fantastic. And I've, I've gone to talk wasn't around when I was a student. And I think it's one of the best things I've ever personally experienced. Um, so the um, slide is stuck. There we go. <laughs> so the Knight Management Center is our home, and I just want to read out loud our cornerstone dedicated to the things that haven't happened yet and the people who are about to dream them up. I think it really captures the Stanford spirit well. We tend to attract people who see life as a series of possibilities. Uh, we hope you're one of those people. Uh, Stanford will change you like no other experience you've had, um, and I, I think you'll be a, a stronger, more innovative thinker 
a more global thinker um, and a stronger personal uh, leader, and frankly, probably a better friend and member of a family too. So I wanna, I'm just looking at the time, I wanna shift gears and um, talk a little bit about the admissions process. We'll answer some questions about that also um, in the session if you have them, and then we have admissions events online every week. And so I encourage you if you have more questions to attend one of those. So you probably are wondering what the secret formula is to get into Stanford. And there's a really scary looking one on your screen right now. And I hope it comes in good news, in, that's good news that there is no secret formula, there is no algorithm. We have designed the application very intentionally to get to know two things. One, who you are, some of what Tamer just said, what's your life experience, what matters to you, what are your values, what are your dreams? And the second is why Stanford? Uh, what is it about Stanford's program, our, our, our location, our program, our culture, our teaching environment, whatever it is that you think is gonna help you become the strongest leader you can? So we have three things that we're looking for. I'm gonna talk about those three and then I'm gonna tell you where we find them on our application. You don't need to take screenshots or take notes because this is all on our application I and mean, you can see it again at our other sessions. First and foremost is your intellectual vitality. And this is not just your grades or your GPA, uh, your, your, um, your uh, GMAT score. Um, really uh, intellectual vitality is, you know, how are you as a thinker? Are you, a, are you somebody who loves learning? Do you love to share that learning with others? Second is demonstrated leadership potential. Demonstrated leadership, leadership potential. Depending upon where you are in your career, you may have had the opportunity to have a traditional leadership role where you have other people reporting to you, but you may not have, and that's fine. You do not need that experience in order to be admitted to the GSB. Um, what we're looking for really when it, we're talking about leadership is your impact. Your impact on the people, the lives, the organizations, and perhaps the world around you. Um, and it's not just what you've done and what you've accomplished, but help us understand. We want, we're inviting you to help us understand how you got there, how you lead um, to positive results. The third criteria is your personal uh, qualities and, and, um, and contributions. And so this is really all about you. And again, we'll find it in multiple parts of the, uh, of the application. Who are you? What have you done and why? So these two slides um, will show you where we find those three qualities in the application. So first, uh, not surprisingly, we're gonna look at your academic record. We have, um, we'll ask you for a, a scanned copy of your transcript. Do not convert it into a 4.0 grade scale. We know how to look at transcripts from all over the world. We have no minimum um, requirements other than you should, you need to have a, uh, the equivalent of a, of a bachelor's degree, no preferred majors and no minimum GPA. Second is um, your test scores. So we don't, we, um, you are welcome to take the GMAT, the GRE, both, whichever one works best for you. Um, we don't have minimum scores on those. So take a look why we have a high average, most people do. Look at the range for perspective. Um, the, we know that not everybody's uh, an ACE test taker. Uh, the uh, English proficiency is the one time where we're actually gonna have a minimum criteria. If English is not your first language uh, or you did not go to a school where English was the, dom the, was the, was the language of instruction, you do have to take an English proficiency exam. And again, details are on our website. And then activities and work history. So we're gonna ask you for a resume, but there are parts of the application that also help us get to um, you know, what impact you've had on organizations that allow you to expand beyond what's on your resume. So don't, uh, don't leave the application itself for the last minute. That's a little bit of a tip um, because there's a lot of areas in the application that allow you to expand. We're gonna ask you for two letters of recommendation. This is a fabulous opportunity for you to have somebody else tell us about you. Um, and again, look, you want to look for somebody who's ideally your, your current direct supervisor or maybe a most recent direct supervisor. And your second one also from somebody in a supervisory role and uh, people who can tell us not just what you've done, but again, how you've done it. They're passionate about you. They'll take the time to write a great letter. We have two essays. We have what matters most to you and why. Uh, which is very well known and it's a wonderful essay. And I really, really encourage you to think hard about that question and to answer what matters most and don't forget to tell us why. Don't use that, that particular essay as another opportunity to tell us your accomplishments. Really focus on your values. And then we have why Stanford, which I mentioned before, what is it about our program that you think is really the right fit for you? 
There are optional essays, well, they're not really essays, op optional questions that you can answer if you feel like you still have something to say. And then we also have interviews. The interviews are by uh, invitation only, and they are typically conducted by our alumni. They are behavioral based. And lastly, I just want to mention financial aid, that our financial aid is completely needs based. So what we really philosophically want to um, communicate here is we don't want financial ability to pay to be an obstacle for you to join the GSB. We have generous fellowships that are actually funded by our alums. The average fellowship uh, in the first year class this year is 40,000 per year. So that's 80,000. We'll also help you find loans and seek out external um, uh, sources of, rep of, uh, of funds to take you through your uh, time at the GSB. So thank you again. Um, uh, one last plug for our, for our motto. <laughs> and uh, we'd like to now shift to Q&A and I invite you to ask questions of our three students, um, our recent alums, uh, uh, Jack, Tamer, and Eddie. And of course, I'll answer questions too. And thank you very much. Thanks, Terry. And thanks everyone who chimed in about their experiences. So I'm getting a ton of questions about electives and different classes. So. What I would like to know from the students is what has been your one favorite class that you took in the last couple of years that really stood out to you? Jack, do you want to go first? Yeah, I can go first. So I think my favorite class has been um, MGE, which is Managing Growing Enterprises. Um, so this is when we get um, practitioners in to teach a course all around um, businesses growing over time and really dealing with managerial issues. And so my class was taught by Joel Peterson, who runs his own private equity fund, but is also the chairman of JetBlue Airlines. And the way the class is structured is you read the case, the class really dig into all the things we think you should have done better, role play with the professor who really pushes you on the uh, response that you give. And then he reveals the the protagonist from the case who's in the corner of the classroom and and you talk about how they manage different challenges and 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 how they came to the answers that they did so it's a really good chance to apply a lot of what we're learning uh in an environment that's safe to practice things um but gives you really practical management experience that you can take to difficult conversations in the workplace sounds fascinating tamar what about you <laughs> My favorite class is a little bit similar to MGE. It's called Formation of New Ventures. Um, and every week you read, we read a case by some about someone who has created a business from scratch. Many times they are Stanford alum. They come to the class and for the first part of the class, the teacher asks, what do you think that they should have done in this situation? Which is kind of a hard question to answer as the actual founder is <laughs> sitting in class. Um, and then they speak about what they actually did and you're able to have a really great conversation with them. Again, that's taught by practitioners, um, Jim Ellis and Scott Brady, as well as Professor Garth Sloaner, who are also just rock stars at the GSB. Um, and I loved taking that class. Awesome. What about you, Eddie? Yeah, I would say, so all of the classes that Jack and Tamer mentioned are definitely one of my favorite classes. Um, another one of my favorite classes has to be Startup Garage. Uh, so I came into Stanford not really knowing if I wanted to be an entrepreneur or knowing if I was even cut out for it. Uh, so I decided to take Startup Garage on a whim with um, a couple of my other friends in the class. And it was just an amazing experience. We kind of learned from end to end how to start, like how to take an idea and turn it into a business opportunity. Um, and I want to kind of found my own health, wellness and fitness startup in the long term. Um, so this class was just like an amazing opportunity for me to kind of get started understand what the process is and we had so much fun in the process awesome i'm really glad you mentioned startup garage because we're getting a few questions about entrepreneurship so would love to know apart from startup garage what other resources have you seen either yourself or your classmates take a lot of use out of uh, during their time at stanford in order to venture out on their own yeah so just to add to um, I guess my answer from before, I think so there's a bunch of entrepreneurship focused classes at Stanford, and that kind of depends on what you're trying to learn, what stage of the startup that you're trying to learn in. And um, there's just all these different types of resources. So Startup Garage is one of them. Uh, you get funding in the class if you actually want to you know, start a business. Um, there's also Lean Launchpad as well, which is a little bit more hands-on and boots on the ground. Um, Tamer mentioned, 
their uh, formation of new ventures. So it's you know learning how to start a venture in more of an academic setting. Um, and there's a bunch of um, fellowships and funding resources um, and, and different programs at the GSB that you can apply to um, to really, really get you know your venture started. So um, those are the kind of like formal programs in place. And then one thing that I love about being at Stanford is that we are in the heart of Silicon Valley. We have countless classmates who are thinking about starting their own ventures. So just having informal conversations with each other, meeting up with people, trying to find you know co-founders for your venture is really, really, really easy, and you'll 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 definitely find a lot of resources. Awesome, Jack Tamer. Did you want to add something? The right, the, the only um quick two things I would add is there's also a, a massive um, group of people um, interested in um, entrepreneurial acquisition. So outside of just the entrepreneurship route of building your own startup, the search fund that was originally started as a model at Stanford is a big part of campus life as well. So this is looking to acquire a business if you want to be an entrepreneur, but don't really have the idea. Also then, you know, the, the ability to go across Stanford schools I didn't necessarily do anything entrepreneurial at school, but I did courses at the design school in design thinking, which now in my summer after school, I'm applying to a social enterprise I'm working on. So I think you're getting entrepreneurial vibes from all parts of the school uh, right. and there's more than just a traditional startup route. Awesome. Tamer, you, I saw you unmuting. So if you had to add something, I'd love to know. Yeah, just the last thing that I'd add in addition to everything that Eddie and Jack said is that the the guest speakers who are coming to class are just um, amazing. And sometimes they're prominent venture capitalists, sometimes they're prominent entrepreneurs. And um, if you ever do want to make a connection out of that class, if you get permission from the professor or really hit it off with the guests, you can do that too. A lot of times these VCs are like a five minute drive away. And so if you do have an entrepreneurial idea, I think just sitting in class and making the connections with people who are coming is yeah. incredibly helpful. Um, and you're able to get meetings with those VCs that you wouldn't otherwise get. Awesome. So I wanted to uh, take you three to two years back when you were applying to Stanford. Right. And Carrie, I want you to jump in here as well. And what matters most to you and why uh, has been the Stanford essay uh, for a long time now. So how did you approach the application, not just the essay, but the application? Tamar, I wanted to start with you. If you had any piece of advice to share with the audience who are mostly prospective students and are going to step into the shoes, that would be great. Yeah, I'm happy to go first. I was really excited to start the application process. Um, something that I really thought about was what are the questions that anyone is going to have when they look at my application? Because if you know that there are questions that you would have, then it's very sure that the application committee is going to have that too. Um, for me personally, like I had majored in comparative literature. I worked in content. I did analytical things at my job, but it wasn't like very clear that I had done a lot of analytics on my, if you just looked at my transcript and my job title. And so it was really important to me to approach the process from um, a wholesome like view. So to really work on my uh, quant GMAT score and to have my recommenders talk about um, analytical things that I had done and then also to put that into my essay. And so I really thought a lot about how I could make myself seem like that whole person that was maybe missing if you just looked at one aspect of my application. Um, and so that was really great. And I was able to ask my recommenders to talk about specific stories and really think about um, analytical stories myself to add to my application. Jack, did you want to add something about your application experience? Yeah, so I think um, w one of the one of the things I love about the what matters most to you and why question is, I think the admissions team are really just looking for an honest answer. I didn't plan on applying for an MBA and I wasn't part of an organization that a lot of people went and did MBAs. So I was applying a little bit blind, which allowed me to just honestly answer the question. And I think where people get tripped up is you try and rehash your resume or rehash another essay into what matters most to you and why. And it really doesn't matter what the answer is. I thought about how do I spend my time? What do I do? What excites me? What's important to me? And put that down on a page and obviously crafted it into, into a story and an essay, but in a way in which was truly authentic to me and how I, how I use my time. And I think my advice to people is 
there is no golden ticket. There's no answer that, that anybody's looking for. The answer is the one that's true for you. What about you, Eddie? Yeah, I, I definitely echo Jack's, um, Jack and Tamer's answers to that. I think one of the most pivotal moments for me in the application process was I, I wrote about a topic and I kind of bounced it around with the people who were really close to me and who knew me really, really well. And the consensus was, is that really what matters most to you or are you just writing it because you think the admissions committee is going to like it? And I think that was such an important moment for me in the right. process. And um, it kind of forced me to think a little bit deeper for what what really, really mattered to me. Um, and and that's where I kind of started to bring in parts of, you know, my identity and what made me unique and what makes me the person and the leader I am today and why. Um, and that level of authenticity is what the admissions committee is really, really looking for. So I can't stress that enough. Awesome. Carrie, do you have some finishing thought about the Stanford application and uh, what are some of the common ways people make mistakes or what are some of the common ways people actually do well on those things? I, I think the three um, the, the three of these guys have just did an incredibly good uh, job. We have a workshop that we do um, when we have some on-campus events, and we're mm -hmm. trying to, we're experimenting with whether we can do them uh, effectively online. Uh, where just ask yourself that question: What matters most, and why? Write it down, and ask yourself why about five times. And at some point, you might within those whys shift. Uh, it's just a really right. it's, it's a really interesting approach that um, that uh, that people seem to really enjoy doing. Awesome. So I'm going to jump a little bit of um, to talk about post MBA and uh, you three just finished your MBA. So they're at the cusp. So it's a great time to ask you that question. What did you come to Stanford thinking you'd end up doing? And did you actually pursue that or did you end up doing something totally different? So Eddie, I'm going to start with the reverse order. So Eddie, let's start with you and I'm going to go to Tamer and Jack after that. This is always a very funny question to answer. Um, so I didn't really have a great idea of what I wanted to do in the long term when I applied to the GSB. So I I wrote about, you know, something vaguely connected to consulting because I came from a consulting background, but consulting right. for, you know, social impact and, and nonprofit. Um, that aspiration has definitely changed over my last couple of years. And the 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 changing moment for me happened actually when I was thinking about what I wanted to do during my summer between my first and second year. And I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was asking all of my friends for advice. And then one of my friends gave me the, the very sage advice to just sit in my room, look around and just tell myself what I'm seeing. And I sat in my room, I looked around and I saw um, athletic clothes. I saw a t-shirt from Barry's boot camp. I saw my shorts from soul cycle. And then I, kind of realized to myself like oh my gosh like I love health wellness and fitness so why don't mm -hmm. I try doing it for a summer uh, so this past summer I worked uh, as an intern for Barry's boot camp loved every second of it I didn't realize that you could have a job where you could wake up so excited every single day to go to work um, so I realized I had a passion for health wellness and fitness um, I am not starting at Bain until 2021, so I have like six, seven mo months of runway post-graduation to do whatever I want. So right. I just recently joined a fitness tech startup um, out in Los Angeles, and I've just been there for a week, and it's been an absolutely incredible experience. So Awesome. Uh, Tamer, same, same question, but I would like to ask you if you have some insight info of what shows are going away and what shows are coming in from Netflix. That would be great, too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, sadly, I do not have that insight, but ask me in a few months. Um, on, on my, I think in my application, I wrote that I wanted to do consulting and I was actually very dedicated to that cause. When I got to the GSB, we talk a lot about like entrepreneurship and innovation, and there's definitely a good chunk of our class that does that, but there's also a huge chunk that does like consulting, investment banking, tax, some of those like more traditional jobs. So um, I came in and consulting actually recruits like a little bit earlier in the year. So you have to start right. practicing for it in the fall. And so I think I did 50 cases. I actually went through the entire consulting interview process and um, was thinking about doing consulting, but Netflix was interviewing at the same time. And mm. I worked at YouTube and loved media and thought maybe I should put my name in the ring um, and ended up getting my dream job um, on the content strategy team at Netflix and doing that instead. 
I think taking either of those roles actually is very consistently in line with what I wrote. One about doing consulting, but then two about making a difference in content and technology, because that's something that I'm really passionate about. And I think want to use to change the world. And it's changing literally as as we're speaking right now, like we're using content and technology to make this happen at the, at the moment. Um, so it is weird that I'm doing very much what I wrote in my application. And I don't think that that's true of, of most people at the GSV actually. Well, or in, at that, this school in general. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. No, I was just gonna test to what you just said with Jack. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, I uh, kind of I'm kind of I'm not um, I am going into private equity operations after school uh, so working with portfolio companies um, so I said that I wanted to set up a social impact uh, and for profit and non-for-profit consulting business um, which I'm doing this summer with a friend of mine in the UK but then I'm gonna go and take a role helping portfolio companies uh, improve and, and drive value I think I was sort of clear coming in what I wanted to do, but what I was really clear on is how I like spending my time. So like my advice for people coming in is, if you don't know what you wanna do, think about what you enjoy doing. And yeah. then in the first couple of months, your classmates are an amazing resource to test that. And everybody's really open and you sit down and say, okay, I might be interested in VC and you speak to somebody and they give you their honest answer on what it was like for them. And for me, that didn't, didn't sound what I wanted to do, but other roles did. Um, so I'm not doing exactly what I wanted to do in my essay. I'm doing it for a few months this summer and then trying something else for a couple of years. And then we'll probably go back to uh, consulting for non nonprofit companies um, is, is my long-term goal. Awesome. So Carrie, I want to circle back before asking them another question around goals and how important goals are. And it often comes up, you know, in the Y Stanford essay or in the interview. So, um, what do you think people should do when they think about their post MBA goals while they are applying to Stanford or other business goals? You know, you can look at the, what you actually have, what Jack just said, what you've enjoyed, and Eddie also referred to this, like what you actually enjoy doing. Um, and, uh, and, and, and use that as a starting point. Um, you know, for me, I, I was in government. I knew I wanted to pivot into industry. Right. Uh, and I wasn't quite sure what, so I just kind of came in and like Jack just said, just talked to a thousand people um, and the career counselors, et cetera. So I would just, you probably know in your heart what your goals are. And, mm. uh, and if not, just, just start asking that question, what do I want to be five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road? Who do I, what's my legacy, so to speak, Either, even if it's just an internal uh, drive, um, not everybody wants to be famous. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and just kind of own it. Just really think about yourself personally. And if, if something sparks, great. Don't make up an answer if, for you know, because you think that we want to hear it, um, especially if there's no evidence in the rest of your application that that's even an interest of yours. Um, right. You know, so it's okay to, to not know, <laughs> to admit, you know. So I think I said something like, I, I want to work in, Ameri in an American manufacturing company and help them break into overseas markets. That was pretty vague. Right. Mm. And that's not exactly what I ended up doing. Um, so I hope that helps a bit. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. So jumping into students again, I'm going to start with Jack, move to Tamer and then go to Eddie. If you had to, because you guys are recent alums, so I get this liberty to ask you these questions. If you had to do this all over again, right? So you went back to Stanford, maybe for the class of 2022, what would you do differently? That is a great and very challenging question. Um, what would I do differently? I mean, the other two can still think I'm putting you on the spot, so sorry about <laughs> that. I think I would take even more risks. Mm. I think that there is so many amazing classes and I think, um, Early on, I'd come from a background that wasn't necessarily as traditional as um, some of the other class, some of my other classmates, and I did take some risks in terms of classes and courses. Um, but Stanford is such an amazing place. I think you could spend ten years here and not do everything. And so, if I could do it again, I would try and have more hours in the day and take more random courses that are going to really stretch me. I really wanted to take the improv class at Stanford, which I didn't take, which is meant to be incredible. And there's a few other um, amazing classes that I would like to have taken that, that would have pushed me even further out of my comfort zone. 
Awesome. What about you, Tamer? Uh, I agree with Jack on the class front, actually. Um, and I wish I would have taken, if I could redo it, I would have taken more classes outside of Stanford GSB. And I actually took quite a few classes. Um, I took a French conversation class. I took uh, a feminist essays class. And those were um, at like the undergrad schools. I just think that some of the other schools at Stanford are incredible and it gives you the opportunity to meet people from different backgrounds who are different ages than you, who have an expertise in the law or in, or in engineering. And there are a few classes that I could have taken, but I thought that I should take some other GSB class and that's not necessarily the case. I think um, you have like up to 10 units and Carrie, please correct me if I'm wrong, that you can take outside of um, the GSB and they'll still count toward the units required for graduation. And so that's like four or five classes that you can take. Um, and I wish I had just taken a few more. Awesome. What about you, Eddie? Yeah, for me, I think there are definitely two things that I would have done a bit differently. The, f the first thing is I would have signed up to give a low keynote. Uh, so for those of you who are wondering, um, at Stanford, we have a program called Low Keynotes, where you basically have an opportunity to give a seven minute kind of speech about a area that you're interested in or passionate in. And uh, it's filmed and it's put up on YouTube. And um, it's kind of like a great moment to showcase your expertise. And uh, I wish that I kind of applied and, and gave and had that opportunity. Um, and then I think the second thing is more from a social perspective. I wish I was a lot more deliberate in um, building relationships with more of my class. I think I kind of let things flow naturally and I you know, naturally form relationships, but there are so many talented and amazing people in our class. And I wish I was more deliberate in reaching out to them. I was hoping to do that more in this last quarter, but unfortunately with COVID, uh, didn't have that opportunity, but that's definitely something that I would have done differently. Awesome. So we're pretty much nearing the end of the session, but I wanted to hand it over to you, Carrie. Like there, uh, most of the people who are watching this are prospective students are, and are going to apply this year or next. Do you have any last thoughts for them? Um, you know, I would approach your applications with confidence and just, you know, I've heard a lot of people struggle. How am I going to stand out? You mm -hmm. do stand out because there's no two people alike. Even if you look like similar on a resume, you had different life experiences. So don't count yourself out. Don't obsess over and, and Tamer, you know, mentioned, you know, she saw that she was a little bit weak in quant and I did too. So I wrote a little bit about that, um, but I didn't like become obsessed by that one point. Uh, and just said, I'm still going to put my foot in the door because if I don't apply, right, I'll never know, right? Yeah. So, so approach it with confidence, with excitement, a lot of introspection. Uh, even people who don't get into Stanford will write to me or our team members and say, I'm so glad that I actually went through that what matters most exercise because I really had to dig deep in, for myself and help me understand where I wanted to take my life. Um, so it's a bit of a gift, even though it's actually very challenging. You know, take advantage of it, and and I hope you do apply to Stanford. But even if you don't go through that exercise, it's really useful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Carrie, Jack, Tamer, Eddie. This was our last school session, so I wanted to thank you for participating and engaging with the community. <laughs> we have another student panel in just fifteen minutes, but thanks again so much for spending time with us. Thank you, Shovik. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 -bye. We're off, right? <laughs>